Life Track with Chuck Swindoll is a presentation of Insight for Living Canada. It was John Cumming who wrote, The Empire of Caesar is gone. The legions of Rome are rotten in the dust. The avalanches that Napoleon hurled upon Egypt have melted away. The pride of the pharaohs is fallen. Tyre is but a rock for bleaching fishermen's nets. Sidon has scarcely left a wreck behind, but the word of God still survives. All those who have threatened to extinguish it have only added to it, and it proves every day how transient is the noblest monument that man can build and how enduring is the least word that God has spoken. Bernard Ram, in his work, Protestant Christian Evidences, adds this thought, a thousand times over, the death knell of the Bible has been sounded, the funeral procession formed, the inscription cut on the tombstone, and the committal read. But somehow the corpse never stays put. Voltaire, the French philosopher, declared that the Bible, by the time of his death, or surely by 100 years after his death, the Bible, along with Christianity, would be swept from existence and pass into history like ancient relics. Voltaire died in 1778. Thomas Paine was cut from the same piece of cloth, also a philosopher, but not a Frenchman, an Englishman, who moved to America and then back to Paris to do his greatest work, a two-part work entitled The Age of Reason. He claimed on one occasion that he had gone through the Old Testament as a man might go through the forest, felling trees with an ax. He openly announced that he had gone through and felled the tall cedars in the forest of the Hebrew Scriptures, and that though they might be stuck in the soil again, they would never grow Poor Tom, he died in 1809, and the Bible lives on. I found it interesting that Bunyan's work, Pilgrim's Progress, second only to the scriptures for publication, has been rendered in 18 different languages, and it lives on to today. All that Homer has to say has been preserved in 20 languages. All that Shakespeare wrote has been translated into 40 languages. Tolstoy's works have been put into 60 languages, but the Bible, either in part or in whole, has been translated into over 1,000 languages and dialects. In the words of one sage, it has endured all the anathemas of infidelity, all the edicts of tyranny, and has conquered all the gnawing teeth of time. In spite of that, the Russian dictionary that was released in Moscow under the Soviet state publishing firm gives this definition for the Bible, and I quote, It is a collection of fantastic legends without any scientific support. It is full of dark hints, historical mistakes, and contradictions. It serves as a factor for gaining power and subjugating unknowing nations, end of quote. You and I know that when you open your Bible, you're moving into battleground territory. We are in a day of battle. A great deal is said against the Word of God. It always has been and it always will be. The Bible has withstood centuries of oppression, and the opposition continues today. There's a battle against the Word of God because it's alive, powerful, and changes lives. When you open your Bible, as Chuck Swindoll says, you're in battleground territory. This is Steve Johnson of Insight for Living Canada. Listen to more of Chuck Swindoll's Lifetrack messages at lifetrack.com. CA Life Track where life and truth meet The preceding Life Track presentation was brought to you by Insight for Living Canada The original message A Symphony for the Soul was copyrighted in 1978 and this Life Track sound recording was copyrighted in 2013 
by Charles R. Swindoll Incorporated. All rights are reserved worldwide.